Hi, I'm Kevin. Thanks for stopping by a garden hike. We're standing next to a table where we recently just finished up putting about 900 pepper and tomato seeds in these two inch plug trays. Now eventually these are going to find their way into these four inch pots. They'll be upgraded in about two to three weeks after we get some germination. We had the opportunity this year to grow several thousand little pots for a local garden center. But today's video, we're actually going to focus more on just what the setup was on this. The vertical racks, the flooring, the potting table, the heating elements that go under the seeds. We'll talk about some of the lights that we're using. How this all got started was my wife and I, we started quite a bit of our transplants in our garage over the years, but we live in a very cold environment. So even into April, it's really, really cold out there. And I didn't want to any longer heat a garage up to 70 degrees. We're only using about 30 square feet. The garage is 900 square feet. We've got these tables, they work really well. We can roll them in and out to get the natural sunlight. And then I did have some LED lights in the garage as well. But what happened is on like windy days and we weren't there, the seedlings would just get beat up. And the sun was actually too intense for those little seedlings. We decided just to go ahead and take an area in our normal living area where it's already 68 to 70 degrees. And we decided to build these vertical racks. What we did was we converted a recreation area that we really don't use much anymore. There's a pool table here and that's what we built our table on. We went ahead and just took an old greenhouse panel and prop that up with some supports. And then we put this layer of plastic to protect it from any kind of a water contamination. After that, we put on this rubber pond liner. Rubber is a really good insulator for the heat. So it works well under these heating mats that we're gonna look at in just a little bit. Let's start with the floor, the area surrounding the table. We wanted to go ahead and put some kind of a impervious surface down where in case we spilled some water and soil, it'll be a lot easier to clean up. So I went to the hardware store and I found some plywood sheets and they were $35. So I went over to the budget area and I found some cheap ones that were kind of damaged for five bucks a piece. We then went into the garage tile area, or at least that's what it's marketed towards. These are clipped together tiles that we used about 118 square feet worth in this area that you see here. And they, they work really nice on top of that plywood. If you were to put them right on carpet, it's a little bit too spongy. I didn't put any plastic underneath in case there's a water event. I'll just have a shop back nearby in case we spill some water. We can quickly vacuum that up. Now the vertical racks that we decided to use are called muscle racks and we got them at one of our mass merchandisers, Menards, very similar to the Home Depots and Lowe's that are around the United States. And for five racks we paid about $150 each. But what I really liked about it, they didn't have the solid bottom. It actually had airflow or that mesh type metal that it'll, the air will move right through there. And that's going to be important for growing the plants. The other thing I liked about these racks is I'm going to be able to hang our grow lights underneath. Now, we're not going to be looking at the grow lights today. There was a little bit of a indecision on my part of what type of lights to use. So that's going to be part of the next presentation. Make sure you subscribe if you want to take a look at that when we go into the, the seeding, the soil, where we got the tags from, what kind of fertilizer we're going to use, and how much we're going to get for all of this once we bring them to the market. One of the next most important things if you're going to try to germinate seeds is to have some type of a heat element underneath. So what we ended up using, and this is the best price I've found out there, it's called AgriTape. And you go to Agriculture Solutions, they've got many different sizes, whether or not you want something that's only like four feet long by a foot, um, or you want something that's 18 feet long by two feet. They've got many different sizes. What worked out perfect for us is on this table, it's about four feet by eight feet. The other thing that you're gonna have to purchase is a thermostat or a controller for this. That's sold separately. And then we're using the AT Junior 13 amp. We were looking at $174.99 for the actual heating mat, and then about $150 for the thermostat. Now I'm gonna break these costs and vendors all down that you can look at exactly where we purchased them and exactly what we paid for them. I am not an affiliate for any one of these products that I'm mentioning today. Make sure you check the description though if you do go ahead and you link to those sites in case that changes down the road. Let's talk about the light support that I use. I just purchased the black iron pipe, very common for gas lines. Also on Pinterest, it was all the rage for a while making tables out of it. But if you package this all together between the pipe 
and the couplers and the fittings came to about, I think it was $175. I did try using PVC pipe at one time and it's just not strong enough. It just, it bends down. Since we are indoor growing here, the lights are one of the most important part of this whole setup. And they're also the most expensive. I have these lights on hand, uh, sold by Mars Hydro. The model number on these is a TSW 2000 LED 300 watt lamp. They cover a footprint on a table, depending on where you hang them, of about three feet by three feet, or if you get them up higher, about four feet by four feet. Now these lights that we have here are gonna stay here. And we're gonna use those, once those seedlings germinate, the nice thing about these lights is they've got a dial on them that we can range that up and down. We can go 25%, 50%, or full eventually. And there's no exact formula. If you start reading about LED lights and lighting in general, you've got to experiment a little. But I'm confident that we're gonna have good luck with these lights because we have used them for growing a lot of our different lettuce, arugula, spinach indoors for a couple years now. I've got a video if you're interested in that. You could go to the Garden Hike channel on YouTube here and page back. You'll find where we did that lettuce growing and see how that process all came together. So I'm gonna pull back this plastic, let these breathe for a little bit. And this plastic is something that I like to put over the top of the seeds right up until you just start seeing them peek out. It's going to create that high humidity, that soil won't dry out on you. So that's an important step in germinating as of this recording. About the cheapest I could find, these Mars Hydro 300 watt LED lights was about $219 and I believe that was before shipping. Let's go ahead and take a look at the potting bench that we put together for this area. Now our potting bench is set up if we ever want to take it down quickly. I've just got a removable backstop with piano hinges. That can drop right down. And then just a sheet of plywood. And underneath these bins, they double as a nice perfect height for working area. And then we can also store uh, here we've got vermiculite. You could have a bin of perlite if you wanted. And you could have a, a bin of your finished seeding mix that you like to use. So you can see how quickly you can set this up and take it down. We've learned that a potting bench doesn't have to be, you know, crazy large. You can just work in small batches as you move it from point A to point B. And the nice thing about having the three bins, if you need to get in one of them, it's just a matter of sliding that bench over. You can come in, open up your bin. If you needed to bring out the middle one, as long as you're on the outside too, you can slide that out, open up your cover. So it's pretty functional in that regard, especially if you like to have different recipes of soils. As this project moves along and those seedlings emerge, air circulation becomes very important. So we don't have to have any high-tech fans. We're just going to have an oscillating fan and a floor fan to keep that air continually moving. Our goal is going to be to keep the area at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the spreadsheet listing out the vendors. And we did the math and it adds up quick, you know, up in that $3,500 area for the different parts that we purchased to make this all happen. But if you do the math, we're going to get about 1,500 four-inch pots growing on these vertical racks. And if we can get two, even $2.50 a piece, just our first round of growing, we're going to be able to recapture our costs immediately. And then everything from that point on becomes more profit for us. Out of the five vertical racks that we set up, we're gonna be using four shelves per rack. And that's gonna give us 20 total shelves where we should be able to fit 78 of this size pot growing on each shelf. So that's 1,560 pots. So that's a good amount if everything goes well. We'll be patiently waiting for our grow lights to come in that we're gonna hang on top of each shelf that we're gonna use. That'll be a big part of the next video. That brings us to an end on this video. I appreciate you watching. As always, thanks for watching Garden Hike. I appreciate it. We'll see you again soon.